أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم الحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وتندوا نفس ما قدم لقد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون dear brothers and sisters we want to greet you with the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As you may know, dear brothers and sisters, uh, this uh, viewing of this particular section uh, comes as a result of Ramadan almost being over. And we have just uh, uh, passed the threshold of the half of the month. And we want to let you know that time is running out, that you want to be able to do uh, what you can and get the barakah that you can, but come out of the month with a renewed spirit. So we want to finish our discussion, dear brothers and sisters, on the subject of self-censorship during the month of Ramadan. As we mentioned earlier, when we talked about our goals of Ramadan, when we talked about the benefits of Ramadan, and when we talked about the levels of Ramadan or the degrees of Ramadan, we said that you cannot go into the month of Ramadan with that knowledge, with that level of understanding, without that, that information, without making it uh, uh, impact your life, without it being of some benefit to you without you doing something without you making some kind of change that's what i was looking for without you making some kind of change after 30 days or after about 15 20 days in your life asking yourself whether you did the right thing or whether you're doing the right thing or whether you did enough or whether you're doing more or whether you did too much See, we don't talk about that either, dear brothers and sisters, about maybe we did too much. Maybe we should have just laid off. You see, maybe we should have just been a little easier with the situation and maybe it would have turned out different. You see, and so the idea is this self-censorship is that we're always questioning ourselves and we're never feeling like we did enough or we're never feeling like we did too much. You see, sometimes we get to the point in our self-censorship where we don't question ourselves, so we think we did enough. So when Ramadan is over, we don't think we got to go to the masjid anymore. Because I was there for Ramadan, brother. I was there. You know, I can take a break now because I was there the whole Ramadan. I was there for iftar every night. But were you there for tarawih every night? And some of us think that we were there for iftar and tarawih every night, that when Ramadan is over, we don't have to go back to the masjid. I'm here to tell you, dear brothers and sisters, that after you doing that for 30 days, when the 31st day comes, you're looking to grab your coat and go to the masjid, and then you realize, oh, there's no tarawih tonight. Well, let me go over and make Isha anyway. Because that vibe that, that you've developed a habit in your system now, now that becomes part of your activities, your daily activities, make no mistake, you're not doing any of this for nothing. This is repetition so they can develop a level of, of, of change in your life. A new schedule, if you will. That Ramadan puts you on a new schedule. So now you've, you've, you've done 18 days of Ramadan and now your schedule has changed. Your schedule is not the same, dear brothers and sisters. You're not the same guy you were or the same sister you were starting the month. You have a renewed spirit, your purpose, you found your purpose, and now you feel like you belong right here at the masjid, the Islamic center, in the Muslim community, working, doing things. And you're no longer the person that's, we're just working in the masjid when we're in the masjid. But when you're out of the masjid, you're still working in the masjid. It's important that we understand that, dear brothers and sisters. And along with that self-censorship comes the, this, 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 this unanswered question as to whether I am doing the best that I can do, whether I did enough. During the Eid, they describe Umar ibn al-Khattab and, and, and Abu Bakr Siddiq having a discussion. And Umar witnessed or observed Abu Bakr, and he said that Abu Bakr was in tears at the Eid. And Abu Bakr <clears throat> was in tears and he was questioned by Ummah ibn al-Kitab, may Allah be pleased with him, who asked him, Oh Abu Bakr, it's, this is the Eid, why are you crying? You just finished Ramadan. And he said, yes, but I'm crying because I don't know whether my fast is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you got to think about that. That here is a man who was one of the closest companions of the Prophet the first caliph of Islam, 
was concerned about whether his fast was accepted. That's the muhasaba that he had. That's the self-censorship, the level of self-censorship that he put on himself. Dear brothers and sisters, how many of us are like that? May Allah help us be so. To that we say, I mean, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.